let's talk about filtering our galleries in Canvas apps. So this is episode seven in our multi-part series comparing model-driven apps to Canvas apps. And so in the model-driven one, we got related records really easy, right? It was built-in functionality. We didn't do nothing. It was just there. So we're going to kind of replicate that functionality over here in Canvas apps, but it's going to take us a little bit of work. Sound like fun? Well, let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over here we've got our mostly functional power app at this point. And so now what we want to do is add that filtering. So to do that, we're going to click on our gallery. We're going to kind of size it down, pull it down a little bit. We're going to do an insert here, and we're going to insert a input drop down or drop down down. And so for our items here, what we want is we want to use our vendors list like so. And you can see that it just guessed what field to use and it got it right. And it's showing us power apps and buddies toys. Now, in order to filter this, then what we can do is we can say, hey, you, we want to filter products where vendor dot vendor. So whenever you reference a, a, a lookup, right? So vendors name of our table. And so here you're saying where the vendor column, um, you know, we're doing that polymorphic lookup dot vendor is the ID, the primary key of that. So you're gonna say where vendor dot vendor equals, and then we're going to do our drop down dot selected dot vendor as well. And so if we do that, you're going to see that those filter down. And if we change this from power apps to buddies toys, that works as well. So that selected dot vendor, you can see it returns the GUID, the primary key of that. That was automatically set up by Dataverse. We didn't do anything. It's just there. But this is the best way to do matching. So you don't have to worry about, you know, names at conflict or which field you want to use. The table dot table name is always going to be the primary key. So those two would then give us exactly what we wanted. So now we have the ability to find our related records. Now, what if we want to see all of them? What we're going to do is we're going to go here to our drop down. We're going to go and we're going to change this to say, hey, allow empty selections. And we're going to change this to true. So then now your drop down, you can have nothing selected. But if you have nothing selected in your drop down, your gallery has nothing to show as well. Hold down the alt key to show you what it would look like if it was live. But then if we choose power apps, it comes back. We deselect power apps, we lose it. So what you have to do here is then add logic. So we're going to go in here and we're going to put parentheses around our current one, like so. And then inside these parentheses, we're going to say or, oh, like that, or, and then is blank drop down one dot selected dot vendor, which is what we were picking from for. So what this does, this says, hey, if vendor, uh, the vendor field equals the selected vendor in here, then return the record. Or if this is blank, return the record. So now if we say play, when it's blank, we see everything, right? Power Apps 1, 911, and Buddy's Toys. If we hit the drop down, we choose Power Apps, we just see the Power Apps 911 stuff. If we choose Buddy's Toys, now we just see Buddy's Toys. And then if we deselect Buddy's Toys again, we see everything. So that is how the best way to have this type of scenario where you want to filter everything, right? So basically when that thing's blank, show me it all. And then if you understand this, if you then just start to span out, right? We're not gonna do this today, but if you had more fields, if you had two different drop downs, right? You would have an and where my cursor is now, and then another set of parentheses that did the logic for that drop down. And then you can have as many of these tests as you want, all inside of one filter function, and it's all delegable, which is really nice. So that would be how we would incorporate this logic, these related record logic that we did over in Model Driven, but inside of Canvas apps, just with a little bit of filtering shenanigans. And you know, and maybe you have this on a different screen, maybe you have different interface, right? The logic stays the same, how you just choose to manifest it, totally up to you. And that's it, my friends. I think we're done with this Power Apps. I feel like feeling good, right? We're going to hit save up here and then we'll publish it out, publish this version. And so then that's the live version of our Canvas app. Yay! And so what does that mean? That means in the next video, we can start talking about how to get this stuff and start pushing it out so that my users can use it. So if you want to check out that next video, where we're going to talk about packaging the solution, some security stuff, sharing, all that stuff, click on the link up there, right? That's the next video in the series. If the video is not out yet, that's okay. Then it'll be out tomorrow, right? So just be a YouTube subscriber and you'll get notified when that comes out. And with that, I'm going to say, 
Thanks and have a great day.